Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Gergő and I'm excited to share everything I know about Excel, Power Query, Smartsheet and Power BI with you. In today's video, I'm going to build a Power Query friendly Excel form, which is not more than a simple mileage tracker, which could be used at any companies to measure the usage of their vehicles and probably make informed decisions by building dashboards based on the data of the forms. So let's get started. Okay, let's build this query friendly form finally. I prepared two sheets. One is going to be the actual intake form. The second one is what I call the settings, but it's basically another support sheet what I'm going to use to make our form to be a little bit more dynamic. So the first and most important thing you need to do is to create your defined ranges on the form because the query likes to see where the data should be pulled from. So if you go to the formulas tab and you hit the name manager, the new window you hit new and you will need to figure out obvious names for your ranges so vehicle number let's say vehicle underscore um, the range is not okay so it refers to only one cell i select the cell itself i hit okay my range has been created i'm going to create the next one vehicle brand the range is going to be the f5 it okay so i need to repeat the process and name all the ranges where i'm gonna have those data inputs on my form okay i have created all my ranges on the intake form the next thing i'm going to do is to create a table on my sheet because this table will hold all the details and information about the vehicle usage so i prepared some headers i'm going to select those then i go to the insert tab and hit table In the new window i'm going to check this box which says my table has headers because i prepared those excel will assign a default style to your table what I'm going to change now okay my table has been created and as a default it will name automatically based on simply saying table and the number of the table which has been created in the workbook so far but I'm gonna change to create a more obvious name for my table I can do it directly from the table design tab or I can go back to the name manager and simply select the table hit edit and name my table so let's say usage table and i'll hit ok my table has been assigned to this range i go to the settings sheet and i'm going to do the same for these attributes User tab table my table has headers let's change the style just by like this gray once it's done i can go to the formulas tab name manager find my table table 4 hit edit let's say vehicle detail i close the window and i go back to my intake form okay the next thing i'm going to use is the data validation under the data tab we are going to build a dynamic drop down so i hit data validation from the settings I choose list and we are going to use a function which is called entire. We need this because the function itself is not able to pull the range names but it can treat text so it can return a value based on a text string. So what we will need to do is to enter the range name what we will want to pull as a value in our dynamic dropdown it's not more than our table name and the column name so we had the table first vehicle details angle brackets vehicle now that's the column the name of the column close double quotes close brackets hit ok my drop down is created so basically the indirect formula pulls the vehicle number column from the setting sheet since it's dynamic if i add a new vehicle to my table then it's going to be automatically displayed on my drop down okay let's make our form to be a little bit more dynamic let's say i want to pull all the vehicle details and it's very simple i'm going to use a very popular formula called the vlookup or xlookup but this time i'm going to use the xlookup which you can find in the 0365 version so x lookup lookup value is going to be my value of the drop down which is the vehicle number then i go back to my settings sheet the lookup array is going to be the column b where i have the vehicle numbers the next one what we want to get back the first attribute is the vehicle brand so i'm going to select the column c and i simply just close the brackets i hit enter and i repeat the process for all the attributes i'll copy and i'll paste only the formula into the cells the only thing I need to change is the column names in the form. 
formula. So the model is going to be the column D, F, and the G. So if I select a value from my drop down, then my cells should show the actual value from the settings sheet. And as a last step, we should probably protect our form just to make sure that no, nobody will mess with our settings and formulas we have set on our form. So what we need to do, we need to identify those cells or ranges what we want to leave it as an editable range. The first is going to be the driver's name on my form. I'm going to right click on the cell, go to format cells and under protection I'm going to remove this checkbox which is saying lock. I hit OK. The next one is going to be my table but since the table is going to be extended automatically once I, I start entering data to the range therefore I have to leave editable the range after my table as well otherwise the Excel won't be able to extend the table when we start entering your data. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to select the table itself and a little bit bigger range just to make sure that we have enough space to enter any data to hit unlock. A few more steps and our query friendly form is ready to use. The so next thing I'm going to hide the settings sheet since I don't need this anymore. Unless I'm going to update the attributes in a new version, then I can use a new version number as well, which will help me to differentiate the different form versions in the future. So I so my settings sheet is hidden and I go to the review tab and I'm going to protect my sheet. I'll be protect. As you see the first option select lock cells is unchecked. That's what you need to choose if you want to protect every other cell what we don't want to leave as editable. If you want to use any password that's possible too. Let's say I'm going to use a four digit password this time and make sure the use auto filter option is checked in your settings. Then I hit OK. It will ask me for the password just to make sure that it's correct i'll hit ok again and my sheet has been protected as you see i can select and enter anything on the range it's what i left as an editable but everything else is protected and i'm not even able to select the cells itself and the last protection we may want to set up is the workbook protection to make sure that nobody's able to unhide the settings sheet. When I go back to the review tab again and hit protect workbook, I can set the same password if I want. I hit OK, password again, and our query friendly form is ready to use. OK, I entered some dummy data just to test our form in query. Say I'm going to select the vehicle number 3, that's a Mercedes. I like it, I'm going to save my form and I'm going to pull this form into a power query table. Okay, let's test our query friendly Excel form. I'll go to the data tab on the ribbon, then I'll choose on the left hand side the get data option from file Excel. Work. It will open up a new window which is not more than a file browser. I'm going to find my file, I select and hit import. Excel will immediately read the content of the Excel file we created and as you see we have a lot of objects created with the defined names and ranges. Since I don't want to pull only just one, I'm going to select the entire folder and then hit transform data. Excel will open up the query editor and it will immediately read the entire content of the Excel file. And as you see, the most important reason to create those defined ranges because the query can identify the type of the objects as well. And if I don't want to apply any unnecessary step to my query and make it more powerful, then it's the best way to make it query friendly. So let's say this time I want to pull just a table directly from my Excel file without using any data transformation. Then I select the table type and from there I'm going to select the actual table I want to use from the item column. Let's say this is going to be the usage table. I'll hit OK and under the data column you will see this double arrow which will expand the content of the Excel file. I'm going to click on the double arrow, remove the original prefix and let's see the columns we have. Here we go. I have all the data pulled directly to a query table from my Excel table without using any additional data transformation. The next step you may want to do is to set the correct format of each column, each data. So what you need to do is to select the column, go to the Home tab and under the data type, you choose the, the type of format, which is the correct one. The name is the text. That's fine. The other option, if you select the column itself and, and you select the format sign at the column header, you click on there and you select the correct format. 
bit state. You repeat the process and you set all the correct formats for your table. Once that's done, you can directly load your data to a pivot table or a simple Excel table. And in order to do that, you need to go to the Home tab, click on Close and Load and choose the second option which says Close and Load to. After you clicked on the Choose and Load to, it will open up a new window on the Excel graphical interface and that's where you can set the different options. This time I'm going to load, load my data directly to an Excel table, so the default settings is gonna be good for me. Table on a new worksheet. I hit OK and as you see on my screen my query has created my table on my Excel sheet.